Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's take a look at the graphical representation of the Van der Waals equation after we've multiplied both sides of the equation by v squared and writing it in terms of v. So we have v cubed, v squared, v to the first power, and a constant term all set equal to zero. Now in the ideal equation where we have pv equals nrt, or if we write v as, or small v as big V over n, the number of, uh, the volume per number of moles, then we can see that there is an inverse relationship between p and v and we have the 1 over x kind of lines for the isoterms, for the lines that, re that represent constant temperature in a PV diagram. And so most of us are very familiar with this. But what does it look like when we instead have the Van der Waals equation? And as we saw in the previous video, there are so many different things that constantly vary. The pressure, the volume, the temperature, a over v squared varies, and then b has a different proportionality compared to the volume. In other words, the value of b changes relative to the volume. As the volume changes, it's very difficult to kind of get a feel of what this equation really represents. But what we can say is that very, for very high temperatures, the PV diagram for the Van der Waals equation looks very similar to the PV equation of the ideal gas. When the temperature begins to drop, then we can see that this term begins to change in value times v squared relative to the pv cubed term and we begin to see changes in what the pv diagram looks like eventually when the temperature lowers far enough we get a point on the graph which is considered the critical point at the critical temperature where all three phases solid liquid and vapor or gas can exist at that particular time at the same, or I shouldn't say at that particular time, but at those particular conditions for pressure, volume, and temperature at the same time. Then as the temperature continues to decrease, for temperatures lower than the critical temperature required to be able to draw the critical point on your graph, then you can see that the graph begins to oscillate like that and we begin to have roots relative to any particular value on the vertical axis. Notice the equation has three roots for this particular value of P over here, over there, and over there. And then you can see that things continue to change as the temperature drops and eventually it kind of drops below the graph here. But notice what this means is that for this particular value for P, the, the, the gas is actually in a solid state over here. Here it will be in a liquid and vapor combination state and at volumes greater than that it will then be at a vapor state. You can see then as the volume decreases and the temperature increases, you will need greater pressure in order to be able to compress it into a solid form. If the temperature decreases, it will require less pressure at those smaller volumes. So the graph, the PV graph, behaves a lot like the PV diagram for an ideal gas until the temperatures drop to a su sufficient amount or until the pressures get to be sufficiently large or the volumes get to be sufficiently small, then very strange things happen to the curve because of this cubic relationship between the volume and the other uh, state variables in the equation. So hopefully again that helps differentiate between what, we look, what things look like on a PV diagram for an ideal gas and what things look like on a PV diagram for a Van der Waals gas or for a real gas because Van der Waals is a pretty good representation of what a real gas does in nature. So hopefully that clarifies it a little bit more.